Hello, as you know, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I'm the owner of scienceinhydroponics.com and today we're going to give you an update on our Kratky tomato project. If you saw our video, this project where we're going to take and grow, we're going to grow a tomato in a Kratky setup, but we're going to track a bunch of different variables through the entire life cycle of the plant. So in this video, we're going to show you how we actually cut the bucket, put the plant in, and we're also going to show you some time lapses about how the plant has grown. And it's already close to setting its first fruit. It's already, it already has flowers. And so we're going to update you about all of that.
So this is the Mycoto server interface, and these are the results of the CRAD key system. All the variables that I've measured through time, excluding the nitrate, potassium, and calcium measurements that I've made um, manually. So these are all the readings that are made by the Arduino system and that are transmitted to the Mycoto server. You have here the evolution of the CRAD key system basically through its entire lifetime. So it started around the end of April and we are around one month in now. So the tomato actually started growing a little bit before this. Uh, I didn't have all the sensors fully set up, up up until a week after the tomato had germinated. So the actual tomato plant, uh, Bernard, actually has la one week, is one week older than what you see here. So what have we learned through this entire time? So what we've seen is that initially when we started the system, the conductivity and the pH both dropped significantly while the plant basically grew. So this means that the plant was uptaking significantly more nutrients than water, which is not surprising given that the actual makeup of the solution was not um, that like that traditional. You can see here the uh, readings that I've made of nitrate, potassium, and calcium. And the solution was designed with a lower nitrate content. So it was made with a lower nitrate content. And you can see how these have evolved through time. So I haven't taken readings during the past six days, but these are all the readings that I've taken up until, up until this point. You can see, so you can see here today is the 23rd, so I haven't taken readings for like the last six days, but you can see here, uh, that originally the nutrient concentrations were fairly standard and they just dropped a little bit. The concentration of calcium increased because calcium was not uptaken as, um, as much as the other ions. Nitrate never increased and it all it became it was stable for uh, something like the first 10, 15 days and then it started dropping as the tomato plant grew. Because remember that in uh, this Kratky setup, you have like 12 liters of water. And when the plant is small, the effect was really small. So most likely what happened is that this concentration dropped and dropped and dropped. This initial drop is because there were some algae in the system at the very beginning. But as the plant grew, then these values dropped and dropped and dropped. Uh, a li little by little by little. And they only started dropping aggressively when the plant grew significantly. So they dropped, they dropped, they dropped, and this is when the plant started growing. And you can see here in the environmental controls uh, how this happens. Not the environmental controls, but in the environmental measurements. Here we have the air temperature, the, the humidity, and the solution temperature, which is in green, and the air temperature, which is in blue. And you can see here that in the beginning, since the plant is small, the effect of the plant on the environment is fairly low. The plant was subjected to fairly large temperatures because there wasn't any climate control there, really. Just like a lamp, the simplest setup you can imagine, just like a growing tent with a single lamp, uh, a single LED lamp. So the temperature was quite high in the beginning and the relative humidity was quite low. Although here in, uh, I'm in the tropics, so the humidity can be higher, but inside the tent, it was actually quite low. And then as... As the plant grew, you can see that the plant started to effectively regulate its environment. So the temperature started to drop and the humidity started to go up. This is normal because a plant effectively acts like a swamp cooler. So the plant will uptake water and will evaporate it through the leaves, effectively lowering the ambient temperature by increasing the humidity, which is exactly what we saw here. So as the plant grew, it started having this effect and then we went into these regular cycles uh, you can see here the higher temperatures are when the lights, when the lights uh, turn on, for example. Uh, you, for example, you can see here, like um, the lights turn off, the temperature drops, then the solution temperature is much smoother. I can, uh, I believe, I can remove. So if we look just at the at the solution temperature, you can see that it's significantly smoother. 
And these uh, these instances are instances where I either like looked into the solution to take a sample for measuring ions. So this is why you have these like interruptions in the curves or when I made additions. So that's the other point. Uh, as the plant grew, uh, it started when the plant started growing aggressively, which was around May 9th, it started up taking nutrients more aggressively and this increased the pH as nitrate. It started to uptake nitrate extremely aggressively. And you can see this here. You can see how the uh, nitrate concentration drops dramatically, reaching even only 12 ppms here because the plant grew a lot and was uptaking a lot of nutrients. And uh, so this leads to this increase in pH up until to around 6.4. So initially it dropped to around 5.6 and then it started increasing, reaching a high of like 6.5. And this spike in the EC is when I did a water addition. So I added some new nutrients. I, I added nutrients because the EC had actually dropped. So nutrients had been absorbed. And we also confirmed this by measuring the actual ions in solution. Um, so we can see that nutrient absorption was happening way faster than water uptake. Uh, and then we had this spike when I reloaded the solution. I added two liters, which isn't that much considering it's only around, let's say, 15% of the capacity of the system. Then as the solution mixed in uh, fully, I cannot mechanically mix it very efficiently because of the because of the roots, because the roots are huge. So as soon as the roots, um, so as soon as the water actually diffused, we have a drop in conductivity uh, as the nutrients were again uptaken and the new solution mixed with the entire thing. Then, so this happened May 16th. So like a couple of days later, which is May 19th, I had to do another addition because the plant had already gone through these two liters. One important improvement for the next uh, time I perform this experiment is to add a level indicator because uh, I, it would be very useful to actually measure the water level here in some way. And of course, an oxygen sensor is also dissolved oxygen sensor is also in my plants. So then we had another increase here uh, because I added more solution and then on the 23rd, the plant had over the 22nd, the plant had already run through these, and then I added three liters, not two. This was two liters added, two liters added, and then here I added uh, three liters, so that uh, because the plant is huge now and it's uptaking a lot of water and a lot of nutrients. So you can see so far the experience with the Kratky system tracking all variables has shown that if you start a system with a low nitrate ratio, then you can, uh, you, it will take a significant amount of time while the plant is small for it to have a significant effect. So while the plant grows, the effect will be small. You'll just have like, you might have just like this drop, slow drop in the pH. Then as the plant starts growing aggressively, you have the normal increase in pH you expect with a very aggressive nitrate uptake. And it shows that it is essential to perform these additions. Of course, we know that flowering plants in a Kratky setup require these additions of water every now and then. And it, this also shows that not having a water level indicator here is a problem for the setup. So next time I'm gonna get a water indicator, but so far so good. Plant is growing fine, roots look very healthy. There's been no problems. And well, these are like the these are the experimental results of the Kratky setup. I hope you enjoyed this rundown into the uh, variables and how I'm actually taking readings. Thank you for watching this update on our Kratky tomato project. As you saw, our little tomato, which we've called Bernard, a plant that we're very fond of now and that should be setting fruit soon. You should expect to see a further update in the coming weeks where we're going to show you the development of the fruit. And I'm also going to show you more about the root system and how the water level has changed inside our Kratky Tomato project. We might also need to do our first nutrient solution change. And I am going to be 
customizing the nutrients a little bit given what we've learned in this first part. So thank you very much again for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and share and support our little project. Um, any opinions, any comments, any questions are absolutely welcome. Thank you very much again for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye-bye.